Oh, what's going on this evening, folks? I'm in a, uh, a lovely strip of uh, wetland, just admiring some of the hand the uh, handiwork of my boss, actually. Doing that off the clock, nice and easy, you know. That's, that's, the, uh, that's government efficiency for you. But anyway, the plants that I'm looking at tonight, we're going to see an awesome mix. Because I'm in a really cool area where you get the blend, the ecotone, if you would, of a mesic prairie and a really, really nice wetland system. Already in the wetland system in the foreground, as you can see, this wonderful purple guy. That right there. Let me zoom in. Oh, yeah. So the purple is Pontederia cordata, or pickerel weed. And then there's pink in the background. The pink in the background... I'm circling it. The pink in the background over there is, I believe, one of our native species of mallow. That'd be Hibiscus machitos or Hibiscus uh, lavis. I'm not 100% sure which at the current moment. But, you know, so I'm in this really cool wetland stretch, and I wanted to show it off because, uh, you know, wetlands are such an amazing ecosystem, and I don't really think they get half the respect they deserve, especially in Indiana, the world's most uh, polluted state. The world's most polluted state, because the only thing that matters in the world is America, obviously, because we're just gonna be we're just gonna be like that, I guess, you know. But anyway, let's talk about plants because I don't want to talk politics. I want to talk plants. Oh yeah, what we've got right here is Tritoscantia ohiensis. This is a wonderful one to put in your garden. I'm gonna show you guys a lot of native shit, and it really would flourish in a garden because a lot of the stuff I'm showing you is technically upland species, but they, they thrive in the mesic prairie systems. So what that means is that if you put them in your garden, the rain's gonna water them for you, and they're gonna do a kick-ass job. You might have to kind of mind them a little closely uh, the first couple years, and you also gotta mind this as well. Watch out for ticks always. Make sure you identify the species of tick. This was a dog tick female, I believe. Fuck you. Uh, Back to the plants, back to the plants. We'll start off with a really nice easy one that I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with. This right here, note the nice opposite leaves, the scleriform, that means he looks like a ladder, uh, structure of them. Look down from the top. Ooh, yeah, it's just like a cross because it's almost perpendicular to leave. And get a load of the flowers. These ones are kind of old. Here's a newer one. And then you got some buds, of course, with some nice pubescence. This, by the way, if you couldn't tell already, this is the common milkweed, Asclepia syriaca. I've got another milkweed to show you guys this evening. That's the uh, swamp milkweed, if I can find one on the edge of this dang beaver dam. Here's a fraxinus of some kind. That's really cool to see regenerating. Oh, man, there's so much. Oh, okay. So, so what we'll do real quick is we'll do a comparison of two flowers in the same genus. This will be really fun. So take, a, take note of this Asclepius syriaca, okay? Because what I'm about to show you in about a minute or so, once I walk over there, is uh, Asclepius incarnata. That's uh, the swamp milkweed. A really kick-ass plant in my personal opinion. Absolutely beautiful. Here is swamp milkweed. Now you'll note that the flower structure is a bit different. Swamp, meads, swamp milkweed's got more of an umble sort of shape, whereas the common milkweed is kind of more of a, uh, like a dome, perhaps, you might say. Uh, or a circle. I would say a circle. It's like a circle. A sphere. A sphere. Oh, dude, I'm so bad with words. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, yeah. So this is Asclepius incarnata, the swamp milkweed. It's a really lovely one to throw in a, uh, say, like a particularly wet patch of your home garden. What do we got growing next to it? But of course, the state-listed American calamint. I love running into this guy at work, because sometimes you're just walking through a damn wetland, and then out of nowhere, everything smells like spearmint, and it's because you've treaded upon the sacred plant of the wetlands. One of the many sacred plants of the wetlands. There's a lot of cool shit that grows in here. A lot of awesome stuff calls this ecosystem home. And uh, why wouldn't you call it home? Because look at that beautiful vista. Oh, yeah. Take it in, nice. You can hear some, uh, I think, cranes calling. What an awesome place. Whew. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go look at some more uplandy stuff now that I've shown you guys the, uh, the swamp milkweed and the common milkweed, shall we? I'll probably call some things state-listed when I'm making these videos, and that just means that it's kind of a, an uncommon plant to see in the state. I've got right here is a pretty common one, though. This is, I think, Scirpus, uh, Scirpus or, uh, Scirpus... No. 
Okay, so what I did just there, I did a quick check on the uh, sheath to make sure it didn't have any polka dots. This is uh, Scirpus, uh, Scirpus atrovirens, I believe. A nice species of sedge in the Cyperaceae. Note the, uh, the three square, because botanists don't know what triangle means. Uh, the triangular stem right there is a dead giveaway. And who do we got over here? Oh, but the wonderful Carex lupulina. One of my friends at work goes absolutely bananas when he sees this plant, dude. It's like you got to keep him away from it with a 10-foot pole because he gets a little excited. Ouch. Nice. This is Carex lupulina. Now, here's a quick note right away. What are these giant friggin' things? Those are called the perigenia, and you better pay them some respect because the perigenia houses the akene of the carexes. The akene is a dry fruit, which uh, is surrounded, of course, by the perigenia. That's why it means uh, like around the seed in Latin or Greek or something. I don't really know, but um, things to say about carex lupulina. Yeah, these big spiky ones are the female flower flowers because most carexes are what you call uh, a monoecious plant. There are, of course, exceptions like carex picta, who's a dioecious species, but we don't need to get into the fucking weeds on carexes now, do we? Come on. Anyway, sorry. Uh, caricologists just make me go, like, what are you guys doing? But anyway, this long one, this is the male flowers. That's the anthers, the dongs. Uh, and those are the female flowers, the fruits. Excellent. Dongs and fruits. You got it? Good. See those brown ones? Those would be ready to harvest. They're going to drop into the water and float around because it's in a wetland system and the perigenia protects the, uh, protects the akeen. Pretty cool stuff. Oh, who's this magnificent son of a bitch? Oh, well, it's Silphium laciniatum, of course. Let's talk through how I ID'd that. All right, so first of all, I know it's in the aster family because look at that corolla. That, that massive flower that looks like a sunflower, that's actually a composite flower, which is many flowers. You've got your disc florets. You got these ones. Ooh, disc florets. And then you got your ray florets on the interior. I should have told you this about the milkweeds, but they've got what's called a hood and horn inflorescence. A lot of the different lineages of plants get different... Uh, they form different flowers from one another because different flowers attract different pollinators, different evolutionary lineages co-evolve and, uh, co and uh, like diverge. And look, evolutionary history is just a really, really interesting subject that you should read more about. But this is obviously a silphium because it's covered in these awesome cobwebby hairs that are super stiff. If you touch this plant, it feels like sandpaper. It looks like a, the leaves on it look like a fern or a thistle. I've got a relative of this in my mom's garden at home. Uh, it's about 10 feet tall and it's about to flower. It's very nice. Oh, here's another prairie. Wait, is this an agrostis? Never mind, that's a grass. Okay, this is Silphium laciniatum's leaf. It's huge as hell, as you can see by my hand for comparison. I got kind of small fingers according to my boss, but that's a. I don't want to talk about that. He's kind of weird. But anyway, let's look over here. Here's another obvious member of the aster family because it looks like, looks like what? Looks like a sunflower. Duh. This floor, it's ray floor. It's try to keep up. This is Radabita pinata. Here's what its leaf looks like. Oh yeah. Isn't that nice? Moving along very carefully. We've got right here, this is Helianthus mollis, another member of the Asteraceae. You're going to hear me say the Asteraceae a lot because it's a highly successful lineage of plants. And speaking of other highly successful lineages of plants, let's talk about some friggin' mints. Oh yeah, what do we got right here? This is the classic. You love to see this in people's gardens. I don't know if they recognize the importance of it or if they just think it's cute, but it's both. This is Monarda fistulosa, member of the mint family. Get a load of those verticillaster inflorescences with the labiate corollas. It's a bilabiate corolla, actually. What's that mean? It means it's a flower with two lips, and the verticillaster is the way it's arranged, because in the mint family, you often get a verticillaster arrangement uh, around the stem or at the uh, axle, the terminal axle, uh, the end of the plant, whatever. Who is this? Oh. Never mind, we already talked about this. This is what Helianthus mollus looks like when it's in bud. Okay, so you gotta imagine all these opening up into little tiny sunflowers because uh, this is, a, of course, a member of the Asteraceae. So you see all those individual buds, they open up, and then you get the full composite aster flower, like you can see in that nice Silphium laciniatum right there. I like to point at stuff, I'm really good at it. 
Uh, that's what people tell me at work, at least. What do we got over here? But you, uh, but another weird aster. This is Eupatorium altissimum. 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 Uh, I don't know why I try with Latin. Uh, it's a really cool member of the Asteraceae. The uh, Eupatorium's got a lot of very notable flora in it, such as perhaps you're familiar with the uh, the Joe Pie weeds, which I think are in the Eutrochiums now, but I can't keep up because they keep moving them on me because that's how science works sometimes it changes and you just got to fucking deal with it this is oryngium yuccifolium it's a member of the apaca that's the carrot family another really annoying member of the carrot family is queen anne's lace that's like a stupid weed but i can talk about it later if i want to i'm not going to talk about it later because it's dumb and you shouldn't care about it but anyway this is oryngium yuccifolium isn't that a gorgeous flower on that what you can see right here is a very very compact umbel i oh my god i said it right yes okay sorry back to the back to the focus it's a compact compound um compact it's a compact umbel that's that's all you need to know it's a compact umbel which means that it's got like a hemisphere at the bottom and then a globe at the top that's an umbel i talked about that once when i was uh back over there with the swamp milkweed Oh man, this video is running pretty long already. I'm trying to keep these shorter and I'm doing a really bad job. Okay, here we go. Uh, do, 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 talk about you, 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 and you. Oh my god, dude. What a beautiful plant. Silphium lucinietum. I want to talk about this one because I've talked about it before and I butcher it every time. This is wild canine. Uh, it's a member of the Asteraceae that looks very, very weird. And the reason it looks so weird is because it's lacking the characteristic ray florets. Ray florets? Disc florets. It's so lacking the characteristic... Wait. Rays are... Rays and disc. Yeah, so it's got only disc florets, which are those little tiny holes. So you can see that even in the wild canine, which has like a... You would call that a compound umbel inflorescence, given the shape of it. You know, that nice flat top with a bunch of flowers over it. Ooh, yeah, very nice. Nice flat top umbel. Excellent. There's a beetle on this one, probably getting some nectar out of one of those tiny holes. Wow, what a fun place. That's a bunch of some sort of solidago, I'd guess. Altissimum. I can't say that word right. Oh, wait, there was another really cool plant I forgot to show you. Another wetland dweller. Look at the scarpist, it's beautiful. Okay, I gotta get my feet wet. This is the uh, this is the leaves of that Oryngium yuccifolium, the rattlesnake master. Uh, it's called Oryngium yuccifolium because its leaves look like a yucca. Remember that instead of rattlesnake master. Just remember the Latin because it's easier. Like this one. This is a monarch butterfly. But it's a baby on a swamp milkweed. Isn't that wonderful? I forget the Latin for a monarch right now, but I'll write it up later. But that's pretty neat. Oh, shoot! A Eutrichlaria. Nice, dude. I don't know the species of this one. This is a, a really cool group of plants down here. Oh, God. I gotta squat in the wetland. Not the first, won't be the last. Anyways, this is a Eutrichlaria. The Eutrichlarias are a really neat group of plants because they're uh, carnivorous slash omnivorous. There's some debate about like what the true thing is uh, on their structure. By the way, that's mermaid weed in the uh, background. Proserpina... Proserpinica palustris, I think. Not sure. Anyway, back to the Eutricularia. What's really cool about the Eutricularias is the uh, way that they employ carnivory. What they've got in their root systems, if I could find them. Oh, yeah, here we go. They're modified leaves, which have a, uh, a bunch of these little bladder traps, and they're surrounded by hairs at the edges. So what those traps do... Yeah is uh, basically when a little thing swims by them, they trigger the hairs, which opens a bunch of, I think, sodium channels, and that causes the trap to snap open, creating a vacuum effect, sucking in whatever just swam by it, which is so badass. It's one of the fastest things in nature, I think. Here you can see a bladderwort leaf. There you go. I think this might be not Cornuda, maybe Gibba. Gibba? Gibby? What's your name? Anyway. That's a dragonfly larva that hatched, split at the back, you can tell. Dragonflies actually undergo a kind of metamorphosis similar to butterflies, but way more badass, because in the nymph stage, dragonflies are voracious predators, whereas butterflies are, as we've just seen with that lovely monarch on the swamp milkweed, just lovely and kind of, they just hang out and munch on plants. 
Yeah, he's over there, right next to the plant I wanted to show you. But I got distracted. Oh, Jesus. All right, whatever. This is Mimulus alata. It's a very cool member of the monkey flower. You really often see Mimulus ringens. This is Mimulus alata, the wing monkey flower. Or maybe it's not. Stem is kind of winged. Stem's definitely winged. Yeah, all right, yeah. That's Mimulus alata. Ah, uh, let me see, who am I next to right now while I'm in the water? This is a species of Sparganium, really cool wetland plant that actually filters out rainwater, really good for filtration of heavy metals. Wish I saw that in more city ditches instead of fucking cattail. That's Peltandra virginica. That one whips ass. It's just a good native plant. Provides a lot of food and shelter for organisms to live in and stuff. This is reed canary grass, Phalaris rundinacea. Wait a minute. No, it's totally reed canary grass. What am I saying? Look at how broad those leaves are. I'm an idiot. This is a really, really bad invasive species in the wetlands. It comes in and it colonizes because it's from Europe and that's just what they do over there. And it comes in and it colonizes and it causes havoc. This is the fruit of Peltandra virginica, by the way. That's why it gets the common name of duck potato because if I squeezed this open, it would have a bunch of little bulblets and this weird mucilaginous goop that just came out. Mucilaginous means like mucus. Mucilaginous. Nice. This is a Junkus. I think that's... Mmm. Oh, shit. Was gonna say Junkus canadensis, and I think I'm right on that. And uh, I'm just not even gonna explain that to you, because Junkuses are for nerds. This is Alisma subcordata. The American water plantain. Look at that beautiful chordate leaf. Chordate means heart-shaped. Actually, it's more like a spade, but... I, uh, I screwed up the word already, so I'm gonna stick with it. Anyways... Walking through the wetland. This is an iris. Make sure you plant, if you want to plant irises, make sure you plant the native irises. Because if you plant that stupid piece of yellow garbage in your house, I'm going to come to your house in the middle of the night and I'm going to dig it up. And I'm going to stick iris versicolor or iris virginica there. And you're not even going to know the difference until they bloom because it's really hard to tell them apart until they bloom. Oh man, is that annoying, by the way. Not sure who this is. Very interesting, though. All right. I, was, I think I might have rambled enough, actually. Oh, no, I want to talk about one last grass. This is a Euthamia, the flat-topped goldenrods. Back it through the Solidago field, and I got the cops called on me one sec. Anyways, they gave me a ticket I have no intention of paying. Moving right along. Uh, I'm not going to pay that ticket, not because, like, I'm above the law or anything like that. It's because that the poor officer who was doing his job there didn't exactly know what he was doing. Uh, I'm not parked in his town's jurisdiction. I'm parked in uh, part of the National Park's jurisdiction. If it was an LE Ranger, I would have had to be worried, but it was just some rent-a-cop, so, like, I'm going to be fine. Anyways, moving right along, stumbling into a goddamn wet patch to show you guys some of the beauty of the wetlands. Look at that. Lobelia cardinalis and uh, the Joe Pie weed. Over a nice creek uh, bedded on either side by Sparganium. With the asters in the distance and the birds calling. This is the wetland, folks. It's where I like to call home. Oh yeah, pretty nice. <laughs>